Good morning, crazies. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. And Roxy gives you a very crazy welcome as well. As you can tell, it's freezingly cold. Not, I guess, literally freezing, but almost. Oh, you want to be pet? Oh, you are not being loved on. I'm sorry. Okay. Is that better? Is that better? Okay. It got into the high 30s tonight, which is the coldest it's gotten so far this winter time. Or I guess fall, but now it's feeling like pretty much like winter. And tomorrow night it's supposed to get into the 20s and the same for the night after that. So we have a lot of work cut out for us because we have to harvest the whole garden and everything before it freezes and goes to waste. The funny thing is though, is that after these few days of winter temperatures, it's supposed to get back up into like the 60s at night, which is crazy. So like late summer, early fall temperatures. So we just have this little dip of cold weather that's gonna end the garden. And then we're gonna have really warm temperatures for a while after that. But there's nothing I can really do about that. It'd be nice if it just like stayed warm weather this whole time instead of dipping into cold weather, but We'll just have to deal with it. So in addition to sometime today, getting all the animals prepped for super, super cold weather, I also have to harvest all our pumpkins. We have to harvest all of our sweet potato greens. Sweet potatoes themselves can stay in the towers because they're warm in the dirt or whatever, but the greens are gonna die. So I'm gonna feed those to the animals. We have to harvest all of our tomatoes, both red and green. All of our basil, all of our tomatillos, all of our beet green leaves. Like the sweet potatoes, the beets themselves can stay in the ground, but the leaves are going to die. And those are useful for both our nourishment and the nourishment of animals. We need to pick the few remaining green beans we have left, the cucumbers. Did I already mention tomatillos? I might have. I also have to finish harvesting the mallow of our spinach off of our tower thing. Then in the garden, the last thing is harvesting some of those zinnias because like, you know, why waste so many beautiful flowers? This is our first load of basil. It's about half of what we have in the garden and it's filling up this entire wheelbarrow. We're gonna have our work cut out for us big time, not only harvesting all this stuff, but then doing something with it. Okay, it's about five hours later, and while I did have to take a break from harvesting to milk and do other animal chores, we have this so far. This is all of our basil. <laughs> so much basil. And then there's a bit more basil in here, and then this is just like four or five tomato plants worth. Look, they completely filled a five gallon bucket with just like four or five plants. I have to take a break because we're leaving this afternoon, so I have to like shower up and get ready for that but I'm gonna have to do a lot more when we get back this evening from our appointment. All right, we're home from the doctor's appointments and back to harvesting. We started, well, I started at seven in the morning. It's now 9.30 at night. And as you can see, everything that we can salvage is salvaged. We're giving up on the green beans because most of them are for seed anyways and it'd be too hard. The only things left alive in here, oh, we're also giving up on some of the Malabar spinach. The echinacea is gonna just die and the roots will come back next year. Same thing with the strawberries, but everything else is ripped out or picked thoroughly clean. And we're finally done. And man, oh man, this last bucket. But let me show you inside. We have a bajillion pounds of everything. It's crazy. The work we have cut out for us tomorrow is going to be just as hard as it was today. Just a different type of hard. Okay, so we have these buckets of tomatoes. These buckets of pumpkins. I think these are mostly leafy greens. More tomatoes. 
mint, and then the basil still. It's starting to wilt, but I figure wilting is just part of the drying process, and we're going to be drying most of it anyways, so it's not that big a deal. Oh, and even more cherry tomatoes. Oh my gosh, and then you should come downstairs. We have the craziest sight I think I've ever seen. So we have one, two, three. If you can't tell what these are, it's bushes of cherry tomatoes that we just piled together and tied up in these like sacks. We didn't have time to pick all the cherry tomatoes off of the branches, so we just gathered the branches. And we have three whole eggs. Oh, it's gonna be so much work tomorrow. Oh, and it looks like one more batch of tomatoes are going on a blanket and being tied up to. So that's four of those. Then we also have all the animal modifications we had to make to get them winter ready. Let me show you some. We have the goats in the barn. And the barn door is closed to keep out the wind. We have all the chickens in the barn. Little girls have to be separate, so they're in this stall. And we closed the rabbit door, so there's no wind blowing on them. They have plenty of burrows, so they don't need any extra shelter. Unlike the goats, we brought two little shelter things in there for them. Keep them extra warm. The angoras are already pretty winterproof. They have this little sectioned off area, as well as a dust bath nest box to snuggle in, and their super long warm fur. Sterling also has a similar little area that's blocked from the wind with a nest box in there. He doesn't seem to want it though, he's enjoying the cold. Unlike me, my hands are freezing. Uh, and then last are the chicks. They have a heat lamp and the coop all closed up, even the windows. Hopefully they'll keep them nice and toasty. And that is the end of day one of preserving the harvest in preparation for the frost. I believe tomorrow morning it's supposed to be around 20 degrees, but then feel like in the teens, like 17 or something like that, with the wind chill I was hearing on the news. So it's going to be fun waking up and cracking ice and doing animal chores in that type of weather. But thankfully, most of our farm work is going to be inside the nice warm house, preserving all the harvest we gathered today. Thanks for watching. Say thanks for watching, Roxy. Say bye. Bye to the people.